Sorry, I'm so confused. Yeah, I hear... can hear that. Oh, yes. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. I had to add myself to the stream. Sorry, I've got a screen Aha. share. I'm still a bit of a noob when it comes to this screen, screen sharing. Oh, cool. So you can hear me just fine now? Yep. Yep, coming through fine. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so I, I contacted a, a dude on Reddit, Scriptoric, and he wanted me to make him some cards. So I've kind of mostly done that, so I can show you the tail end of that process, and then we can jump over and make your deck. How does that sound? Yeah, um, I've got um, some other people who are helping out with our company sometimes and, and love to sort of be able to show this. Um, getting a very funny, uh, like, Russian doll thing here where there's image and image and image and image and image. Sorry, yeah, that's that's my fault. It's because I'm um I'm it's because I'm looking at the screen and it's recording that screen and then it's yeah, it's just an infinite loop essentially. Um but can you see me? I'll, maybe I'll just have to trust that it. it's all yeah, I can, can see you, see you on the left and I can see yep, now your screen is showing me cards. Share my screen. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, great. It's um it's a little bit weird me not being able to see what's going on, but that's okay. Like as long as it looks fine to you. Um yeah, that's cool. So where are we? Um yeah, so for those people who don't know, so this is Dextrous, this is an app I'm building with a mate. It's a card game design tool to help designers make card games quickly, prototypes quickly. We're moving into components and tiles and tokens and that kind of thing. But at the moment it's it's mostly focused around cards. Um so, do you want me to just launch into it, Steve? Or yep, yep, go ahead. Do, yeah, cool. Do what um, you need. No worries. So, I've just got a Google Sheet over here. So, this is from Scriptoric, and he's um, got these different properties of cards. So, this is all in a Google Sheet, and mm -hmm. he's got these headers across the top here, and that's what you need. And then, yep. um, so this is all the data for his cards. For those people who don't know that, he's got each row here. Is essentially representing one card so it's got all the different stuff that's going to go on and then what i've done is i've made a layout so this is what dextrous does you make a layout that syncs with this card data here so let me just go to here i've made a project here called god's play that's the name of it here um that's the name of of his one and then if I, actually, if I, maybe I'll start from scratch here. I'll just delete this component. So this is a card. So I'll just get rid of it and just go from the start here. So I've got an empty project. So this, maybe it's just a card game. I'm going to add an existing layout. So this is a layout that I've already built. And I think I may have to do a hard refresh here. I'm an admin and I keep switching between accounts. This is probably why, sorry. A hard refresh. Here we go. Um, so these are different layouts. So these are like card designs, rule designs, all this kind of thing. Um, you can make, you know, hex tokens, that kind of thing. But essentially what I've done here is I've made a layout and the layout has different zones on the card. So if we zoom in a little here, you can see that there's different spaces where different information will go. And there's like a title zone here, there's an ability here, and that's going to match up with um, the Google Sheet over here, the card name and the ability and all that. Um, and I'll show you how to build a layout in a second with Steve. But essentially, the main thing to keep in mind is that these different zones on the card here have to match up with the headings over here in the Google Sheet. And once you've got it um, good to go, you can just go, come to this Google Sheet here and go share, publish to web. And so this is, we're going to publish the entire document. We don't want a web page, we want a CSV. You can also do TSV if you want. But essentially, you just want to grab this link here. So copy that. So I've just copied that link. And I'll just copy this out of the way, back to here. And here, if I, um, if I type here in this table, you can see it's going straight onto the card there. Um, and if I type here, it's going straight onto the card there. So you can edit directly from the table here if you like, but it just so happens that a lot of people have already got 
data in a Google Sheet like this. So you could just add new cards here and make them and just fill out this table here. But in our case, we want to actually import a whole bunch of data. So all we have to do is copy that link into this little cell down here. Uh, so I'll just paste that, hit import, and it's just warning us. It's going to overwrite anything that we've got in the table. That's fine in our case. So we're going to pull it all in. And here we go. We've got the whole deck here. So there's different cards, different stats, and that's ready to go. How did it know what images to put in? Like, is that a file there as well? Yep, it's a... Great question. So um, that's over here in the Google Sheet. Can you see this here? Oh, yep, yep. So there's this, a... This there's is some... Just... Oh, yep, yep. That's, that's just right. the name. That, yeah, that's exactly right. It's just the name of the file. And what I've done is I have in the layout. So if I say edit the layout, right? So say if I'm like, actually, I want this title to be down. So I'm going to drag this background thing down here. Mm -hmm. I'll drag the title down here for some reason. Um, and then if I hit save and close, that that change will be reflected across every card, right? Yep. So that's a layout. So it's a template that we're building. So I'll just move this back. But essentially, it's the same with images. So um, roughly there. This zone here is actually a background image across the entire card. It's just sitting in the background. And I'm just telling it to look in the God's Play image folder. Does that make sense? So if I could, I could, for example, say, you know, look in this other fantasy folder where I've got different images here. And I could yeah. say, you know, put the put these guys in the background. But um, to organize this project, I've just put it in the God's Play folder. So I'll just go back here. Yikes. Yeah, so I'll just do do that and save and close. And essentially, it's looking in that folder, and it's finding the images that match the file names over here. Right. There's a cool little trick you can do. Um, so you would... You would set up those images in in um, uh, Dextrous before you sort of made this list so that you knew what they were all called? That's exactly right. And let me show you here. So if I was over here, right, let's say if I delete these ones from the Google Sheet, right, these soldiers now don't have any images. If I re-import that link, if I refresh that link, um, you'll find those images will disappear, which is what you'd expect, right? But the simple way to get it, obviously, you don't want to type in these images. It's super irritating. So if I if I scroll down to the bottom of this table list here, we'll find these soldiers, um, which are actually here currently. But and, that, and that's showing us what they look like, right? Mm -hmm. But I can just click this and change the image right, right. here if, yeah. I, if I want to do it that way. But to get it into your Google Sheet, there's a cool little, you can actually, I guess you can just do it like that. You can mm -hmm. just copy that there. And, and copy, paste it, copy and paste, yep. paste it in, right. and then drag it down, and you're good to go. Uh, does that answer your question? Yep, yep. Yeah, cool. So, so essentially, once you've pulled that Sorry, in, you're saying you can cut and paste, but then you were saying there was some other way to do it. I'll yeah, so there's a the there's whole. a there's a cool little trick you can use. So if you head over to your images section, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just because I'm an admin here, I've got some extra extra stuff going on. But essentially, you can drag images from your desktop, right? straight yep. into this folder here and they'll upload yep. um so imagine you know you've gone to adobe stock or whatever it is that you you've gotten and you've gotten the rights for images you've dragged them into here they've mm -hmm. uploaded you select them now like that so i'm sorry i've clicked and then i've held down shift and then i've clicked again to select all these images now i can literally just click that there copy names uh, i don't yep. know if you can see my mouse here yep and then yep. I come over to Google Sheets, paste, and there they are. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So that's just a really easy way to get to get uh, that them. Is clever. Yep. Excellent. Google Sheets, if you want. Um, but anyway, where was I? Back to back to our projects. So now, now that we've just pulled in all that data, um, yeah, you can just you can just export it. So um, in this case, um, the guy I was talking to on Reddit, he wants it as a PDF. So I've just clicked print there, and it's displayed it nicely on these pages here. It's ready to print um, to export as a PDF, or you can export it to Tabletop Simulator. I like to add crop marks. Um, that's just helpful for cutting it out. But one really cool feature 
when you're play testing, you might find after the first play test that all the assassins are too strong, for example, yep. or all the, you know, something like that. Or um, And so what you can actually do is just print the ones that you want to. So you can, you can hit none and that will deselect everything. And then you can just select the assassins and it will just display them. So say if you only needed to, you know, print the assassins and the dragons, you can do that and just right. save paper right. so you don't have to print everything, which is nice. Okay, so and so this is under the export, and it's exporting to a print file, basically. Yeah, that's right. And currently, this is just like the preview, so you can see what's going on here. Yeah. But essentially, you hit export, print to PDF. It's just going to tell right. you about paper sizes there, and this is it. So then you save it as a PDF. Um, yeah. So how how does that sound so far? Are you following the process? Yep. That looks good. Um, I'm probably going to have to do it myself to learn it properly, but it's this is useful. Yeah. 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 No worries. Well, let's let's uh, let's jump over to your um, deck and build that out. What do you reckon? Yeah. Sure. Cool. So this is your guild sheet here. Is that correct? Uh, sorry, I'm just logging into the website. Uh, yeah, that looks like it. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, no worries. We'll feel just yeah. gone through and added a card number as well to that because I realized that was missing. Oh, yep, yeah, no worries. Uh, so should I refresh this or I think I think that's all, all good now. Oh, that's I'll, good. Okay, I'll jump out so I don't accidentally change anything. Oh, yep, yeah, no worries. So essentially, um, how I would start is um, looking at is by looking at a rough, a rough kind of sketch of the kind of layout that you wanted. And um, Steve has actually sent me a, a kind of a basic sketch here of the rough layout that he wants for these cards. So all I would do is I would start by making a layout. So I'd head over to the layouts and I'm just going to make a new one. So I'd say create layout. There's all kinds of inbuilt layouts that you can use. But um, in this case, we've got a card title at the top, a picture in the middle and rules text down the bottom. So I'll just create a text zone here and I'll just drag it in to the bottom here. So we've got a grid and snapping on by default. We can resize all this stuff later, but essentially um, I'll start by just making sure it adds. Yeah, okay, so it's rules text there. So this is a, a zone. We call this a zone. It's on the card, and it's going to be filled with data. Um, it's going to be linked up to this. And remember, the name there has to match. So you've called it rules text there in your Google Sheet. So I'm just going to click this and call it rules text now this does have to match um right rules text there and you've got what is it card number card name yeah cool oh what just happened there just lost something. i know you went to my website somehow wait come to me on facebook oh sorry excuse me that was, right. our chat. that was our chat um do you know the picture has just disappeared? That's funny. Hold on. Let me just try and get it back up. Somehow I, I managed to close the picture down. Oh, it's just a Facebook preview. That's what's going on. Okay. So I've got a card title at the top. So I will make this card title. Cool. And we probably want that, you know, nice and big and bold, right? Mm -hmm. And you want VPs on the side there. So I'm going to make it. Yeah. Yeah, nice and big and chunky. I'll turn up the font size a little. Yeah, something like that. Maybe bring it in a little bit, just so it's not cramping the corner there. Um, we've got a picture in the middle. So for this one, I'll add a image zone. So I just click this mm -hmm. one here. Yeah. And do you want that nice and centered? I guess that, that last one is like a symbol or a shape. Up the top, there's, uh, there's like words, image, and then there's a sort of triangle thing. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It's just a shortcut for um, it's essentially these are clipping paths that like clip a a okay. zone, but yep. you can actually just do it. So say if you if you wanted to like say I want this image to be a hexagon, you can come over here to positioning and you know okay. and make it a and make it a hex like that if you want. Yep. Okay. It's, that's nice. Um, yeah, so, so, and you can actually, which is pretty cool. Doug's just bring, brought in this functionality here. You can actually make your own mm. shapes here, which is pretty rad. And we just released a new feature so that if you do make your own shapes, um, 
for the actual card base here, you can import it into Tabletop Simulator. Anyway, oh. that's all a kind of a lot more detail than you need to hear. Sorry. So um, I've just controlled Z back there, back to back to here. So we want the card cost. So that's just going to be another text zone. Um, and actually, yeah, a, a good thing to decide at this point is like maybe a font even. So is this is this fantasy, Steve? Or no, this is um, uh, it's sort of a modern day, um, slightly uh, satirical take on cruise, um, cruise trips, and cruise ships. Yeah, so cool. We want something that looks maybe like an advertising font or something. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you can just um. So what do we want here? We want something kind of. Maybe like this kind of advertising, like something like that, or it's a bit hard to see. It's for some reason like is is there any? I, I can't Sorry. seem to make. Here we go. Well, the, problem is, the problem is I can't make. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yep. Is that is that better? Yep. Uh, yeah, I do, I do like to work at this bigger size. It is a, it's way easier to work at this size. Yeah, that seems like a good font. Yeah. Um. So this font here, what was that? Comic new. Is that oh? Is that right? Are you happy with that? Mm, yeah, that'll do. Look, the, the thing is, when I'm making cards early, I know that my my art guy and my and are going to change a lot of these things. So it does matter to have a sort of the right feel, but I'm also just going, it's good enough, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I know a lot of people would be like, no, we've got to make it look good. And I'm like, no, just have the words. Um, yes. Yeah, I think I, think I agree. The table, right? That's the thing. If I can, That's right. And and the other good thing about this is that you can if you if you decide later like oh I want to change the fonts like you just have to change it in this one spot and it just gets changed yeah. across all your cards which is nice. Yeah. So I'm just going to duplicate this zone here hit control D or you can copy it like that. Um and this is for the upgrade type. Yep. Um so obviously you know turn this down a little. Um and I'll make it yeah, metallic. Yep, that's good. Yep. Bring it bring it in. We want VPs as well. Um Yeah, and a little so, box and, yeah. and this is like a number, right? Is that correct? Yeah. And that that might be a good thing to actually have in a like a, a shape. A shape. Like okay, cool. In a circle or something. Yeah, great. Okay, or so where, a circle. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so. it's a circle, but it doesn't have any background. So obviously if you just do this. Yep. Right, cool. Yeah. Is that good? Yep. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, and you want a cost as well? Yep. Now, VPs, what are usually VPs? Are purple or something? Yeah, or maybe silver. I don't know. Silver, perfect. Yep. Uh, whoops, that is that. This is silver. Yeah, we could do silver. Yeah, silver's good. And then I guess silver. something like a light green for the dollars. Yes. So like, okay. Yeah, a, light, a light green for cash. Yeah. Light green. So background color, and let's give it a border, so we can actually see what's happening here. Oh, what is happening there? Um. Uh, and do you want this here? Did you say? Uh, yeah, somewhere over there, like probably at the bottom left of the picture, maybe. Bottom. Not, we have to play all around with that, but I feel like. Like Somewhere there? around there is like, yep. Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah. Now, in the, is there, there's probably not a way that you can make, like, always show a dollar sign or something. You'd have to put that into the field. Uh, no, no, you can. Yeah. So what you do for that is you just go, is, is that what you mean? Always show a dollar sign? Yeah. So like the, in, in the, in the in the spreadsheet, it's like four, three, two, and I'd like it to show up as four dollars, so dollar four. Now, do I go to my spreadsheet and add the the character there, or can I just put a show a dollar sign and then like can I add text to the field that isn't in the spreadsheet? I guess is what I'm saying. Um, short answer is it wouldn't be worth your while. You can. Yeah. You you could like so for example you could create an an zone that's next to it for example yep. that yep. has the dollar sign yeah i mean you probably... could you, yeah some people might want to do that like cuz so you might for example i could actually i could imagine people wanting to do something like a mini zone right yeah that has the dollar 
sign that's maybe smaller and a different color or something like this, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you could put that there. Now I'm going to need to move by oh, pixel, yeah. Yeah. by pixel that's, here. There you go. Yeah. So I'll move like, I'm just moving, holding control, using my arrow keys here. So something like that, I could imagine. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. And I'll uh, just, and if it's a static, like I would call this a static zone, if you like, it's not changing. So I just want to say, click this little table yep. thing there to put the yep. lock on. Oh, nice. Yep. So and we've got that. Saying, That's good. It, it's not editable and it won't clutter up the table anymore. And it'll kind of go this gray color here. Can you see that? Yep. Yep. That's very clever. Yep. And, and so I can call this, you know, dollar sign if I don't want to um, yep. get confused. But essentially, um, you can help me name these now. So what's this one called again? Uh, picture? Uh, right. Yeah, that would be just the image, yep. Um, uh, this is called upgrade type? Yeah, upgrade type, yep. Type. This one is the VP, is that right? VP? Yep, yep. VP. Um, and then um, cost, I guess, for that one. Would cost. Be the, yep. Right, and... And then rules text down here, whatever that's called, which we've, yep, already labeled, yep. Rules text there. And can you see here, this is actually the wrong side, so I'm going to move this up a little so it's not um, conflicting there. Oh, yep, yep. Um, so, yeah, obviously, you can move stuff around here as you go. That's pretty easy. Yep. So how's this looking? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Do you want uh, this to be more silvery or? No, I mean, that's. <laughs> we could put a gradient on it. Yeah. What about a? Yeah, silver or gold is also another option, I guess. Gold, yeah, okay. Uh, all right, let's do this. Let's get something goldy. Um, so I think I think the silver's probably better because there's a yellow color in the game. So yeah, so okay, let's go back to silver. All right. Um, so yeah, you could you can mess around here getting gradient effects, obviously, if you want to mm -hmm. take the time to do that. Yeah. But if you just is that um. That's good. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gradients are so tricky. They can look so cool if you get it right. Um, something like that. Uh, it's kind of losing. It's kind of, it might drop out a bit. Like I, I don't know more. I feel like we might lose the borders. We might actually need a hard border around it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it stands out from the text. As in, you want this four to pop out more? Uh, so no, I'm, I'm like around the actual area, like this the area, the circle border. Oh, yep. So uh, we know so, that's a sealed off thing. Okay. Uh, so you want a harder border. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Like that. Is that harder? Yes, that's better. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, One other little trick you can do. Yeah, see this four is getting lost a little as well. Um, yeah. So what I, I like to do is just put a... um. A shadow on it so if i just uh, do that nice. yep. and just do it multi-directional yep. just pops a bit and it's Pops actually it. got a a kind of a blur just take the blur off and it'll be it, that's sweet nice um we could do the same for this guy actually yeah i think we should um let's just do the same thing jing jing no blur thanks very much all right how's that looking yeah good good um, Let me go yeah. and see if I can find a stock image for for you to use. Yeah, no worries. Of of what? Uh, something that suggests that I'm upgrading my cruise ship. So I'm just going to Google cruise some ship. rough images or something and see if I can find construction on a cruise ship or something. Yeah, cool. Um, so that we can all have the same image, but an image will do. Are these called upgrades, by the way? Yes. So that might so be on the back or something. Yeah. Um, I'll call these upgrades and save and close. Now, are you happy with this border? Do you like the border? We yeah, can cha fine. change that entirely if you want. Um, so I'll save this one. So essentially, now we've got our um, we've got our layout that can be applied across everything. Yep. Um, so I'll go to projects. I'll create a new project here. 
and we'll call it um, cruise control. And so obviously you have multiple card types in this project, right? Like yep. you've got tourism cards, upgrade cards, island cards. So you can add them all here just in different tabs, which is cool. And now we're, I'm just connecting this layout here, the cruise control one. But we could make another one, for example, you know, called island cards or whatever. And they'd just be tabs yep. along here. Okay, good. And, yep. and then you can, if you want to just print, for example, this is the upgrade cards. Um, you can just print this one by pressing this one. So that's exporting that one. But if you want to export everything in this entire project, you can hit this one up here. Um, and so that would lay them all on, on right. paper, for example. Yep. Um, right. So I think we're ready to pull this bad boy in, aren't we? I've just sent you a picture as well. That you can okay, use. sweet. Uh, so I'll head over to my hidden page here. Um, yeah, cool. So I will download this guy. Okay, so I've got uh, an image from Steve here on my desktop. Um, so can I show this you? This could actually be a static thing for now as well because we, we don't have any art. So all upgrades will have that. So this would be a static field and it would just be now. But can you, or should, which way would you do that? Would you go to the template and go always use this image or would you copy the image into every image file every entry on the table, like for every column, which way? Yeah, you... honestly, either way, like, like it'll be much of a muchness, but I mean, eventually you're going to have unique images, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So in that case, I wouldn't bother making it a static image, like, because it, it's just going to take two seconds. So here's my cruise ship deck, right? Yep. So if I go to images, I can go here. So I'll just make a new folder, call mm -hmm. this, you know, cruise. Okay, so here we go, and here's my uh, my cruise ship deck. So I'm just going to drop it there. Yes, I'll upload that, and so I can actually just head back now to my oops, sorry, to my cruise control. And the only thing is that we haven't told the layout um, what folder to look in, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what we could do is we could copy. So, for example, it's called cruise ship deck, right? Uh, dot uh, JPEG, is that right? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Um, Some something like that. So, if cruise, I if I, I think, cruise ship deck dot JPEG, yep. I think if I go cruise, well, let's see if I can get this right. Cruise ship deck dot JPG. There you go. See that? Yeah. So that will just work because it's looking in the folder there because I've put the folder name there. Right, But if I didn't want to do the folder name, so say if I delete that now, it's going to say, hey, what's going on here, mate? You don't have a default folder. And so then I can just say, oh, I'll use this it. one. Yep. Um, set that and now it'll do it. But I actually think just the full file name is fine. So then we can grab that, essentially come back to your Google Sheet here. Oh, where's it gone? Um, I don't know where it is now, sorry. Oh, what's it called again? Picture, is that what, right? Uh, I don't think. Uh, what did we call it in the actual? Maybe we didn't make one. That's all right. So I'll, I'll just yeah, make. I there was one, yeah. Because I, when I'm working with a, a spreadsheet, I had didn't have one yet. So we'll have to call it. Yeah, picture. So yeah, essentially, I'll just do that, and I'll get rid of this jank at the end. Um, now I'm not sure if that 52 is going to cause us grief. I don't think so. I think it's it's just set to um, import the stuff that we've said. So say, for example, if you've got formulas over here in Google Sheets like yeah. or, or things like this that we forgot to include, like the flavor text, yeah. it should just get ignored, I'm pretty sure. Um, so now I go File, Share, Publish to Web. Uh, not Web Page, we want CSV, Publish. Uh, wait, is that right? Yeah, I think yeah, that's right. I think so. What if I now 
um, grab that link. Oh, sorry, yeah, you go. Is there like just say I instead of republishing the Google thing, like I just want to like I've added like ten new things to a column. Can I do select those cells, Control C, just come over here and Control Paste, or should I always do it this way where I export it again? Uh, yeah, so so the good news is you only have to do this once, right? And then I paste it here, and it's it's done. And now I can just refresh from this end. Does that make sense? Okay, so it it's permanently linked to the Google file. Um, so it's actually just this this link. Does that make sense? So this is a URL here. This yep. link, and what happens is, um, if you look here, hold on. If I click publish content and settings, right? Yep. See this little thing here? It says automatically republish. Oh, yep, yep. Basically, yep. when I make a change on Google's end, um, it will change the data in that link. <laughs> this is one of the Very kids cool. yelling in the background. Um, yeah, so that should just work. And it's it's something's not working. So I'm thinking that... Well, let me have a look here. It could be that... Hmm. I don't think it is, but let's just try it. I'll just get rid of this for a second. I can put it back later. So, okay. Let's refresh this. Ooh, it does not like that. What is going on? So, I'll have a look back here. Just make sure this is all correct. What do we have? Card number. Oh, okay, we don't have that. So where should the card number be, by the way? Yeah, so that would probably be down on the bottom on either the left or the right. It's more okay. of a sort of check to make sure that like it's for less for the it's more for the the designers and the publishers than it is for the players right so it's a little text thing you know this is card number yeah be, tiny i yeah. see i see so it'll be very small we'll just um bring it down yeah. there and i'll call this card number honestly that should have worked so after this i'm going to do some troubleshooting and figure out what that is but let's just go across name oh i think we got that wrong as well didn't we is that right? Yeah, so it's card title. So, so we call need to it, that name. Yeah. Call that name. Upgrade type. We got that. Rules text. We yep. got that. Oh, excuse me. Cost. Got that. Count in deck. We don't need that, do we? That's for you. Uh, or do you want that? No, that doesn't get displayed. That's that's how many we want of those things. So. Oh. Oh. Yes. Right. Okay. Yep. No worries. We can. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, so there, are, there are some cards that are duplicated. Yes. Yep. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, so, and victory points. Okay. Sorry. I've um, named things incorrectly here. Victory. Yeah, that's, and that's good to know that like you, you really want to establish fidelity in the Google sheet um, because everything of that's coming over. Don't try to change things in Dexterous. Just get it all working in the sheet. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can actually, you can, to be honest, you can do it either way. Like, as in, you can rename this or you can rename this. It, it won't matter. Okay, yeah. Um, but, okay, I am I am actually just going to, just because there's multiple pages here, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering if I've done the wrong link here, sorry. So, publish to web. Oh, okay. Oh, this is what I did wrong. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Do I? Right. I've only used Google Sheets as one page. All right. So we want the upgrade cards. Is that right? Yep. Okay. This is this is why it didn't work. Yeah. So I was trying to do the whole whole document. Yep. And and yeah, we haven't set it up to do that. It's only set up to go. The link is supposed to be for a single page. Sorry. Um. So rookie yep. error there on my part. So copy that. Uh. Save and close this. So those should work now and yeah this didn't know what it was doing before so now if i import yeah okay here we go so this is fine and you can see let's just so if at the moment it's set to focus on the cards like this when i'm looking at them yeah but if you want to see all the cards you can just hit this little light bulb here 
But and let's just bump up the size a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Does this look right? Yep. Can't see the. There's no image though yet. There's no image. Okay, so what's wrong here? Oh, uh, maybe it's loading. No, I don't think it is. I think I didn't set that. Hold on. Let me just get over here again. Somehow I've moved my browser window over. So I'm going to go back to the edit layout and just check that we've got the right folder set here. So I'll, I'll click on this zone, this this picture one. Yep. And click cruise and click that. Although that's not going to tell us. Anyway, save and close. But let's just check if I have a different. It seems to have made sure that it entered it. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. If you, yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And if I, yeah, unfortunately we can, we only have one image, so we can't actually test doing a different one. But essentially, that's the idea. Like once you have different images in this folder, you can just click here and select it. Yeah. Rather than typing anything in, because obviously that's a pain in the neck. Um. Yeah. So how's this looking here? Is this looking right? It's good. It's good. Uh, oh, and the only thing we wanted was the duplicates of cards, right? Yep. So some cards um, have there's more. Some, there's a bunch of cards at the end that there's not one of. Yes. Okay. And that's this card ca counting deck yep. here. Now, so there's two ways you can go about this. You can dial this up like that, and that will do four copies of that. Right sorry, click to make you, I miss where you dialed. Oh, sorry, can you see my mouse here? Yep, yep, yep. So if I want more working holidays, I can just ah, click this card count here. Excellent. Yep, yep. Or I can right click it. But obviously you want this controlled by the Google Sheet, right? Um uh, I mean I could do it by hand, but yeah, if you if it could be. But yeah, it can be. And the only thing is this is a because it's not actually a zone, if you like, it's a special it's a special property of the card. Yep. Yep. Um, so we've actually got a column here. Can you see it here? It's called copies uh, down yep, here. Yep, yep, yep. And you can oh, see yes. if I dial that up, um, oh, nice. that's right. actually that one. So so this is the kind of the one exception where if you want to control the number of copies um, by Google Sheet, you do actually have to name this copies. Yep, okay. Um, so that's the kind of one exception where you, you don't change on the, on the dexterous end is set essentially. Um, so yeah. now we've got two and three at the end here. So let's just go down and check. Let's pull in our Google Sheet again. So I'll, I'll click in here, import. Yes, I'm sure. One little thing to note here is that um, Google Sheets doesn't actually instantaneously update. It's basically any time to a minute, which is kind of irritating. So you can see here that there's still only one copy of everything. That's because I actually clicked a tiny bit too early. So I think you'll see here that should work. Hasn't worked. Okay, that's really weird. Only the, only the ones at the bottom, though. That are, that are, oh, yeah, you've, you've scrolled down. Yeah, I think I scrolled down. So this really should have worked. Okay, this must be a bug. Actually, it totally is a bug because look. Oh, okay. So it's happening. I think, I think I've just introduced a bug. Oh, no. Oh, that is working. Okay. Anyway, I'll have to look into this one. But yeah, essentially, you can click there. You should be able to just say copies. I'll have a look into that right after this okay. meeting. Let's try once more. Refresh. Doesn't like it. No. So that's a bug. So I'm going to fix that right after this. And that wouldn't be... Yeah, no, I think that should be fine. That should just work, essentially. So it hasn't, so that means it's a bug. So, sorry, just to, we've got three of, oh man, let me just move this over. Um, 37, two, three. Am I looking in the right column there? Yeah. 
Yeah, so this is a pain. I'm going to fix this so you don't have to do this. What a pain. Uh, and that's two. I think I got that right. Three, two, three, three, and three, and that should be three as well. Okay, card copies there's one, are done. There's one, there's one two at the moment, basically. The rest of There's one two, second from the bottom, is that right? This yep. one? Number 41, yep. Okay, yep. Perfect. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I think the numbers are <laughs> actually out of sync because we start from we start from one, right. whereas this actually starts from two, if that makes sense. Um, so print deck. Now, would you like a TTS copy of this as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really in that f ready for that yet, but, I mean, we might as well get it. Yeah, yeah, and do you want me to show you how that works? Um, what about backs, though? We haven't done the back. The back. Okay, right. So I'm sending you an image for that now as well that we could do. Uh, especially, like, I presume, yeah, like, so every time mm. I make a deck, it will all, it will assume I want all the same back. Uh, yes, that's right. We've actually, we're actually in this really funny spot between very, um, flexible backs and not flexible enough. It's, at, it's actually like sitting at the top of our list at the moment, but, um, you can add a card layout as a card back for your entire project. So if you've only got one deck like this, that's fine. The problem yep. with that is that if you've got different card types, like in your example, it'll try and use the same one for all of them, which right. is not what you want. Excuse me. Um, but the other way is that you can actually make a back for... You can make individual backs for individual cards, is what I'm trying to say. Goodness, yep. got that yep. out. Um, yeah, so do you have an image? Uh, I just sent you one on, on Facebook. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let me just get that up. Okay, so you've got an image here. Oh, hold on, that did not... What happened there? Save image. Um. So... Where are we to cruise? You can actually just drag it straight into there if you want. Um, is that right? Yep, this this guy. Uh, this uh, hook anchor thing. Oh yes, yep. So I was looking in the wrong place. Yep, that's it. Yep, that's it. Um, so in this case, what you can do is just create we'll just create a, a blank one so obviously this can be very detailed but in our case it's super super simple it's literally one image so i'll go cruise i'll go anchor now can you see how um this is trying to like cover the whole thing with this yep. Yep. image that's not really what we want is it so what would you so you can just say contain is that is that good yeah that's pretty good um but we might want a name for it as well so... yeah okay Let's make an actual layout then. So I'll just reverse this. Let's make an actual thing here. Right. And and now we can now this will just give us full flexibility. Um so I'll go here. I'll do that. Yeah. And contain means that it won't um it'll just contain it all within this these That's boundaries. Nice. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um and then you want to call it like upgrades or something or yeah, yeah, upgrades is probably the right title, top or bottom you somewhere. Want... Okay, cool. So I'll just go upgrade. And essentially all this is is um gonna be yeah static, I suppose. Doesn't really matter. Um let's actually go like thirty six. Yep. Is that good? Yep. Uh, cool. So, and let's call this uh, upgrade backs or something. Yeah. Close. 
Okay, so go back to so that's we've made that layout now. Go back to cruise control, and what we actually want is another whole layout here. Um, so we want the backs. Right. So that so actually has done as a separate. That's right. So bring them in as a separate thing. Um, sorry, I just called this. What did I do wrong here? Did I just do the wrong one? Um, oh, I, I totally just did the wrong one. So you can switch the layout here. If you connect the wrong one, like I just did, just switch it. And then you can click on the correct one. All right. Okay, there we go. And I'll rename that and call it Upgrade Backs, just so. Yep. Backs. Okay, so we've got Upgrade Cards, Upgrade Backs. So you can switch between them like this. And then what I want to do now is come over to Upgrade Cards. And I'm going to say, see how it says No Back? I'm actually yep. going to say Use Upgrade Backs as yep. the back. If you wanted... Okay. If you want a double-sided cards, you could actually use itself. That's cool. As, That's very cool. As the back. Um, now, hold on. Is that good to go? I think that might be good to go. Do we need... Oh, we might actually need one for every card, but um, let's just try. I think, I think we might. So, yeah, I'll go print. Um, and it's just spread these pages out, but obviously you want the backs in between, right? Uh, I mean, it doesn't, as long as I can, you know, pick them up and go, that's the back for that, that's the back for that. It doesn't matter how they're printed. I'm not going to double side print. At least, oh, you're, unless oh, you're not going to. Well, like I, I, what I normally do when I'm making these things is, um, I get a, a sleeve playing card front in the front, back in the back, right? So you actually don't need to double side print. Um, gotcha. If you're printing on cardboard, you might, but even then you'd probably stick it on the cardboard or something. So yes, you you, and it's it's usually a bit hard for the printer to perfectly line up fronts and backs. Yes. So it, you can print them separately. Yes, I know. I, I see what you mean. So yeah, so yeah, I guess that's a really good point, actually, if you're going to do that. If you were, were going to double side printing, you just hit this card backs here. And then what it should do is, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's put the one there and the default ones on the back, which is like not at all what you want. So let's right. go back. But um, so what you do to solve this at the moment is you just make a bunch of copies of this. That's all you do. If you wanted to do the double-sided printing. Um, right. So then what that would look like when you put the card backs and the collating in. Oh, hold on. What's going on here? Oh, I've printed the wrong one. Whoops. Print this one. Card backs. And so that's what that would look like. It would alternate right. them for yep. your double sided. Yeah, for that's your double fine. But um, in your case, you, you probably don't even need that. Hey, like if you just go back, let's just go. We don't even need to. We don't need to do this at all, do we? I can just go none. Yeah, we can. We can, just we can literally yeah. just have nine of these to fit on a page. Yeah. Yep. Um, because then you've got a nice um. There done. So now, if you want to print both of them, um, you can. By the way, you can print. See this little icon here. That's saying do print in a global print. Right. Yep. Um. If you have a back, how it's set up at the moment is basically if I'm using these guys and I'm saying print these on the back, it's also saying don't print these as well without backs. <laughs> that sounds really complicated. But essentially, if it's got this ticked, it will print when I hit the global print. So this is my whole project here. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you'll find the backs are here. Although annoyingly, they're actually interleaved like that, which is not what you want. So I'll just add an extra two. Usually that's a good thing, but in this case, it's actually not. Yeah, so in this actually, this is this is a really interesting test, actually. In this case, you probably just want to print that separately, and then you want to print your back separately to get the nine on the page, or just bump it up to eleven and do your global print. 
and that way you get your whole page at the bottom there. Is this making sense? Um, sorry, I was just talking to someone. Oh, yep, yep, no worries. So it's, yeah, it's printing and then it's, it knows to print, does it know to print like 40 of them, 40 backs? Or is it just doing another nine? Oh, sorry, or... I was doing the, your idea where you're just yeah, yeah. exporting one page and then, you know, you can duplicate this in the PDF or print it more. It's sort of time. filled in two there to just make it more efficient or something? Or... Yeah, so it, it, by default, usually this is good behavior because it's assuming that this is another deck of cards, right? And it's trying to be efficient with space. Um, yep. But what I was saying before, sorry, um, was that you in this instance, if you just wanted to do your nine to a page for your printing idea, which I think is actually yep. a solid idea, you'd actually just print this by itself and then you just come over here and print this by itself. So then yep. es yep. essentially you just have this single page here, Yep. print that to a PDF and you, do the same. You can send me those PDFs and I can print it out right now and show it up on the screen. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to call this um, upgrade backs, I suppose. Upgrade backs. Um, and that's done. And then I'll jump back to this bad boy. Print this off. Export to PDF. Now, just a little note here. If you have a gigantic deck, um, this preview screen here see this loading preview mm -hmm. um i tested this on a like a thousand card deck the other day and it took like three minutes to load because chrome is actually downloading every image and rendering it all as separate little images for your pdf so just right. a little note if you run into if you have a big deck like a big deck that can take a you know a minute or two um but then this is done so this is Cruise upgrades. Ah, uh, cool. And I'm just going to send this to you right now mm -hmm. while we're cleaning up other stuff. Downloads. So here we go. Got these guys. Head over to the Facebook Wonder. <laughs> the slowest part of all this is like me just organizing where my windows are. Um, oh, can you see that? No, I haven't pressed send. Sorry. There, can you see that? Yep. Perfect. And what I think what you'll find as well is something we didn't notice before that I have noticed now. Can you see this authentic historical cabins? How that's kind of weirdly up there. I can't see where you are. Oh, yeah, it's touching the top. Yep. Yeah. And I don't, it depends what you want. Like, if, if you're just going to do a quick test, maybe that doesn't matter. But there are very easy ways to fix that. So you can come back here, edit the layout. We've got a cool little function. See how it's spilling out of the zone? So this is how big our zone is. Mm -hmm. And it was actually spilling out and trying to center it top and bottom. And so it was creating more space. You can just, we have this cool little feature here auto shrink text. And so. Oh, okay. Yep. If it meets something bigger than what will fit, it will actually just shrink the text. Like, it depends. You may not want that. You may decide, actually, I do want it to spill down, for example. And so, you know, you'll do something like something like that. And so it'll spill down into that space. Right. But um, it can be a super handy feature. Sorry, I'll just control Z, get this back how it was. Yeah, just put this auto shrink on. Yeah. And, na and now... You should see, yeah, can you see this authentic historical cabins now? It's actually just oh, automatically yeah. shrunk that font a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah, yeah. So it's a nice little nice little feature there. Do you want me to re-export this now? Uh, sure. Cool, I'll do that. I've only received the backs anyway. Oh, Oh, the other one, did I, what happened there? Oh, are they called cruise upgrades? Can you see that there in the I Facebook? Guess. I've only got, I've only got upgrade backs, dot PDF. 
Oh, you're right. It doesn't have a little tick next to it. Okay, I'll try it again. Oh, maybe just... you can't drop two files in. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like a Facebook thing that would just be like, that's hard. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised you can't do it. So I'll do this one. Yes, over at that guy. Um. Oh, did you want to see the tabletop simulator? Yeah, sure, sure. Cruise upgrades. Okay, let's try this. So here they so, go, fresh off the printer. That's come out nicely. Nice. Ready for the guillotine. Fantastic. Oh, I should switch over so I can see this on my live streaming thing. So were you holding them up, were you, Steve? Yep. Hey, awesome. Great. Cool. That's fun. Fun to see. Yeah. Um, did that other one work, the cruise upgrades? Uh, still have no no file in my Facebook. Maybe the file's a little too big. Oh yeah, I think I think it's actually timed out. Yes, yeah, so that's that might be an issue. Yeah. I might have to send that with you via email, sorry. Um sorry. let me just have a look here. Ah, well here's a question. So Okay, so here's the PDF. But yeah, sorry, it's just a little bit too big to send via. Um I have a an account on Dextrous. Yeah, is yep. there a way that you can then give me all of what you just did into my account? And the really bad answer is no, not currently. Right. Doug is halfway through through it, so soon we will be able to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, soon we will be able to, but currently, unfortunately not. We just haven't quite set it up. There's a few security, yeah. security things that we need to set up with that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like it's definitely on the list. Something we're going to do for sure. Um, what's your email there, Steve? Pinstargames at gmail dot com. Okay. I'll just drag this into this email. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Sorry. It's all right. Um. Oh, yep. And then while that's sending or whatever it's doing. Man, how big was that image? Yeah, see, this is, I just, I should have probably thought about that, but I just picked the first thing I found. I do the same thing all the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's going to send you a Google Drive link. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just that image is pretty big. Yep. Um, but, yep, yeah, that'll send you a link in a second. Meanwhile, if you want to export this to Tabletop Simulator, all you do is hit Export, Create Tabletop Simulator File. Um, did I click that? Yes, I did. Okay, and this is the same story. It's just going to... It's actually uploading all the images um, yep. of your entire deck to our server and creating the code for a JSON file. And why that's cool is that you can then drop that file straight into your tabletop simulator folder. So I've downloaded that there. Yep. And just to show you how this works. So in tabletop simulator, um, you have a saved objects file. So in, I don't know if you can see the file path there. If you're on Windows, it's under your piece. It's in your documents, my games, tabletop simulator, save, saved objects. I usually just yep. favorite this folder. And all you have to do is drag this cruise control into that folder. And that's it. And now if I open up Tabletop Simulator, which I'll bring here, um, you create a game, single player game, close out of this. So now I've, I've just got a blank game here. So I go mm -hmm. objects, yep. saved object. So this is the actual folder. And what's it called? Cruise. Oh, I. Can't spell, obviously, can I? Uh, cruise control. There we go. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. Yep. Yeah. That's in. So, and that should all be our cards in there. Nice. So it's just it's just nice because you don't have to. Um, yeah, you don't have to upload individual images or that kind of thing. That's all taken care of. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, it's super cool. The other really cool thing is that if you have a big project, right? You can actually um, import it all like multiple decks 
which is a massive time saver, depending yeah. on how big your project is, obviously. Yeah, so that's kind of um yeah, that oh, and I'll send you that I'll send you that JSON as well. That way you can just use that in your tabletop simulator. Excellent. Uh, there we go. And obviously, yeah, if if the cool thing is that say if you wanted to send this to other people, they can have this is just linking to online images now. This JSON file. Right. Um, so they can essentially have a copy of your game of the cards all all yeah. there without you having to send them, you know, hundreds of images so or whatever. Sometimes people want to print an individual card or something and you want to have each card stored as a separate image. Is that something that is in the JSON file or would I do that differently? Um, yeah, so we currently don't support that. We're in the process of getting that as well. So at the moment we do PDF and the JSON file for this. And what's actually happening behind the scenes is um, if you go, if you open up that JSON file, let me show you. See this here, this cruise control file. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Oh, it's opening it up on my other screen. Here we go. So this is the code for it. And you'll see sure. eventually we'll, we'll get to a URL. Oh, man, where is it? Here we go. It's this, it's this big long one here. Mm -hmm. um, this is an image of your entire deck. So if I just copy that and go right. to um, here, open it up, that's your deck. Mm -hmm. um, so you could use this in, you know, screen top GG, for example. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's just an alternative to Tabletop Simulator, essentially. So, right. like, you could use this image for Screen Top GG if you wanted to use to not use Tabletop Simulator. But yeah, so one of the things that we're working on currently is really good support for Tabletop Simulator for different object shapes. So now we can actually make a hex shape. So, say if I'm, you know, creating a new project here say this one here that i've been mm -hmm. making so where are they i've got triangles or hexes here right yep and if i now export these to tabletop simulator it will actually figure out that these aren't cards they should be tiles wow okay that's clever. um yeah which is really cool it's taken us a long time to kind of get this together but now that we're there it's not much longer to to be able to get the individual images is essentially what I'm saying. Um, so what is this doing? It's just here we go. So if I download this test project ten, it's called. We're going to tabletop simulator objects save objects test project ten. This one and it's actually different. It's a bag now. You'll notice, um, rather than yeah, yeah. A bag yeah and so these, yeah. and so these are actually your, you know, your tiles, which Very is pretty nice. cool. Yeah. That so is yeah, cool. there's there's a few big things we're working on, but essentially, like, yeah, we're just wanting to get really good support for tabletop simulator mm. as our next priority. But yeah, do you have any questions or comments or anything, Steve? No, that's that's all good. Um, I'm looking forward to playing around with it and, um, yeah, showing this to some of my other friends, this video and stuff. So we've got that. I'll, hopefully this, will this be on YouTube as well so that I can, or. Yeah. Is like that cool with you? Is that cool with you? Yeah, absolutely. That? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um, awesome. It's always the, uh, yeah, the, anytime you're trying to solve a problem on some software, you go to YouTube and go, where's the videos on how to. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. And I'm such a poor video person, so I need, I, I will get, I'm going to try and do this more and more and just get better at it. Cause you know, obviously I'm not very good with the whole streaming side of things, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. It'd be really good to have like a whole suite of, of yeah. How to's and tutorials yeah. on how, on how to do various things. I want to make like a tutorial on how to make a 
game like Keyforge. I don't know if that's interesting to you, but um, I've always wanted to make a kind of semi-random generated yeah. card game. Yeah, because I think with ex- you know with Google Sheets formulas, you can do that quite easily, and then you could pull in you know semi-random cards into Tabletop Simulator, which would be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting, and then it would generate every time you play. Yeah, that's right. You could just you could refresh that link and go again, um, which would be which would be fun. Yeah, excellent. All right. Well, I think probably since this is about an hour, we should probably stop there as well. Otherwise, Absolutely. Um, Let's wrap but, it up, uh, and and I'll send you those emails. Else, yeah. Anything else you want to do? I think that's good. I'm I'm just keen to test it out because you know you run into questions that you haven't heard before. That's right. And yeah. yeah, it's really it's valuable for us to test things out and just figure out okay, what's the functionality here that's expecting and and even having you talk through some of those things with me was really great to hear. Like, oh, yep, yeah, right, that's not entirely intuitive or whatever. So yeah, we're always just wanting to make things better for designers. So it's great. Thanks heaps. Thanks so much for joining me. No worries. Thanks for having me, and thanks for helping me make this game. No um, worries. Over and out. I've just got to figure out how to close this, um, I think, end stream. All right. Thanks, Steve. Okay.